Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafizullah. Inshallah, this season we'll be looking at other maraja as well and their verdicts on similar topics. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How's the Muharram season going for you? All fine, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Barakat, Imam Hussain, alayhi salam. I know in, in Muharram there's so many different azan, there's so many different uh, rituals as well. Now one of the famous rituals which is done in Karbala is the Tawirij where um, from a village they run towards Karbala screaming Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, tapping their heads. Um, according to uh, Sayyid Sadiq Rouhani, is these sort of aza, are these permissible or not? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد المواله الطيبين الطاهرين عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم With regard to the عزاء الطويريج in which the believers on the day of Ashura just by the noon time by the end of the أذان and the صلاة of ظهر العصر they start to run from this village towards Karbala, which is roughly between 10 to 15 kilometers of running, 10 kilometers roughly. Um, this Aza, of course, um, was backed and supported by, by the ulama in the past and even in the present. I like Ayatollah Rouhani, as you mentioned his name. He says it's part of the Sha'ar of Hussein. One of the uh, Hussein rituals is this act of running in the Aza of the Warij. Similarly, Ayatollah Shirazi would mention that it is part of the Sha'ir and rituals, and it is one of the favored ones. And uh, the one who participates will be given reward, and a great tawfiq will be given to this individual who participates in this Aza in Karbala. So it is a great opportunity for the one to participate in this Aza as much as the one can, and so that on the Day of Judgment would face Imam al Hussein and his mother Fatima Zahra with a bright face. Ah, Sticking on the rituals and the sha'ar of Imam Hussein, um, the zanjir, um, what is the ruling in regards to zanjir? Um, I know that Ayatollah Sayyid Hakim. He has a verdict. What was his verdict on it? Ayatollah Hakim would mention that we have been ordered to establish the Aza on the calamities of Ahl Bayt as mentioned in his Mas'ala and whatever is known to be part of the Aza on Ahl Bayt So we've been ordered. There's a, an instruction, commands from Ahl Bayt through establish these aza and to participate as well in these occasions. Ayatollah Shirazi would also mention that uh, for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, yes, it is allowed and it is mustahab as well. So it's not only allowed, jaiz, but also mustahab, mm -hmm. desirable to participate in the aza of the uh, zanji. Ahsan, mashallah, we encourage all of our viewers as well, brothers and sisters, to participate in the Azar and the Husseini rituals, inshallah. And may Allah and also the Ahlul Bayt accept your deeds, inshallah. Shaykh, coming back to our topic that we were discussing last time, we were looking at social and family matters. We were looking at, um, well, we were looking at looking <laughs> as a topic and uh, you know, what we are allowed to you know, look at and what we are not allowed to look at. And we were talking about also the hijab. Um, you know, manner, mannerisms and who sh hijab should be uh, preserved in front of and, and, and so forth. If I have a sister who is in hijab and then there is, you know, uh, a non-mahram with, with her, maybe, you know, her cousin or or, or sorts, and they're talking to one another, is it acceptable for him to look at her face? Is that okay? 
Well, while observing the hijab, yes, it is allowed for the one to look at each other's face, but there are conditions which the men mentioned by the Sayyid, um, in which he says, without the intention of seeking pleasure, that's one, the first condition. So you can look at her face with her hijab, but first condition, without the intention of seeking pleasure. Number two, all charm, which is riba, or the fear of there being attraction or captivation, the fitna, iftitan. So basically it has to be an innocent, purely innocent look. And as I've said, do not stare, do not keep looking. However, it should be an innocent look. But by all that means, do not stare and keep looking at the face. Um, although there are some interview techniques they teach you that look at the eyes of the opposite interviewee or interviewer, that you have to look and keep looking so you can get the message. It's better not to look continuously and, and, and uh, um, try to avoid staring at the, at the opposite gender in this situation to avoid falling to these three possible haram. And also the Sayyid mentioned that it is not permissible for a man to look at the face of a woman out of lust and charm. So that's the main, these are the main conditions and criteria. Shaykh, what about if it's with, you know, the Ahl al-Kitab, a sister from the Ahl al-Kitab, a lady from there, Christian lady, Jewish lady, are we allowed to look at the face, arms, hands and stuff like that, or should we also lower our gaze? Well, there is no objection with regard to looking at the face and the hands of the Ahl al-Kitab, as the Sayyid mentions. And Ahl al-Kitab are mainly the Jews and the Christians, those who have, you know, the divinely books, the Bible and, and the Torah. Um, in this case, you can look, as we uh, witness today, uh, at work, shopping, colleges, schools. Uh, but as I've said again, do not stir and don't keep looking uh, just to get what, what you need. So the hajj of looking, you look to an extent that you need and then you just lower your gaze, as the Quran says. Um, but the Sayyid says, as an obligatory precaution, ihtiyat wujubi, that he should not look at the other than the face and the hands. Because usually Ahl Kitab, they mm -hmm. don't have hijab. Yes. So can I look at the hair? Mm -hmm. Can I look at the arms, at the chest? No. Only the hands and the face and without any arousals of shahwa and lust and temptation. Shaykh you know, we have um, a lot of functions, birthday parties, weddings and so forth. Even if it's not celebration, there's funerals and there's majalis and, and, and so forth. And we, you know, sometimes we hire photographers. Is it okay for a male photographer to be taking pictures of a female and vice versa? Can the female take pictures of a male? Is that okay? As the Sayyid mentions here in the Mas'ala that um, it is not permissible in this case. Um, and then he says, let alone going into an inner room or studio where the two non-mahram individuals are in seclusion and excluded from the outside. Uh, as we know that we, we have a hukum with regard to uh, being isolated in a place, a locked place, where a, a female and a male who are non-mahram to each other to remain in that place. Let's say it's an office or a house or a room that nobody can have able to access that. That becomes haram, the khalwa as they call it, isolation. That kind of isolation is haram. So it's better to have an individual who is from the, from the same gender to take the photographs as the best solution uh, to avoid all these haram as aspects. Um, and of course, the one should observe piety, observe taqwa in these instances, in these parties, as you mentioned, weddings or birthdays, that they don't fall into haram. Because sometimes, if it's a mix, then there's a great possibility of haram. Sometimes they put music, which is haram as well. So we try to avoid attending these places if there are possible haram. We ask always. You know, the mu'mineen and mu'minat would ask over the phone when they're invited. 
You know, is there music? Is there dance? Is there such and such? Is it mixed gathering? If yes, then we don't attend. So we try to avoid attending these majalis. Otherwise, if it's a halal gathering, even if it's a birthday, which is mubah, allowed, jaiz, uh, without music, without mixed gathering, if it's only ladies, fine, with each other, or only men, for example, or, or separated places, as we have in the Islamic centers, Hussainiyat, where they, we celebrate the birthdays of Ahl al-Bayt or the Eids, but separated, not mixed, to cause that haram, lookings and, and, and so forth. Sheikhna, you mentioned looking at someone with lust, uh, whether it's you know the, the face, the, the hands, and so forth. What about a male looking at another male with lust, whether it's the face or another part of the body, and same vice versa with the female looking at another female with lust? It does the same rule apply here or not? Of course, if it's mandatory and wajib for a man not to look with lust at the other man as well. Because how the haram eventually ends up by having these two in a haram relationship, na'udhu billah, as we had the story of the Qawm Lut, na'udhu billah. So no, it's not, it's not allowed. And likewise, with regard to the females, they're not allowed to look at each other uh, with lust, um, even if it's just the face. By looking at the face and they get aroused, the lust. So they have to both gender avoid, uh, both sides should avoid looking at each um, own gender with lust. It's haram. And that applies in, in, in anything, that looking at the things with lust is haram. Unless the lust is for, or the shahwa temptation is for the husband and the wife, in the halal way. Allah SWT created the halal means and platforms that we can Consume it in this way, in this path. You cannot use it. You know, it's similar to, uh, for example, eat and drink. If you eat something poisonous, then it would ruin your, your, your body and life, destroy your life. So, no, I ate healthy food. I ate and drink uh, the food in which it's safe to be eaten and drinking. The same thing applies. I have this last, this shahwa. I have to use it in the halal way only. Because if I use the haram way, then I will have to pay a great price. Not only this dunya, but also in the akhirah, in a'udhu billah. Uh, the chastisement and the adab of that world. Shaykh, thank you very much. And thank you for all your uh, efforts over this season. Thank, thank you to all our viewers for joining us this season. And inshallah, uh, we'll be seeing you on the next episode. <laughs> Insha'Allah of Ahkam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.